Hi there, I'm John from CNCROI.com and today we're going to do a review of Engraved Rock. I engraved the rock on a rock, I think it was like two years ago or so. And I just want to give you an update as to what it looks like. Again, when we do laser engraving into rock, I mean we're going into the rock. It's not a coating, it's not a surface, it's not a print, it's not... Whatever is just on the surface is not what we're doing here. We're actually engraving directly into the rock. And if you look at the way the light goes, if I get the focus working here, there we go. You can see that there's no reflection, and that's because we're actually going into the rock here. Now this is a good example of what we could do on rock. Um, we can do any kind of imagery that you want, but the best imagery is black and white because we need the ultimate contrast. If you look at this this rock here, there's not, you know, there's just not a lot of room for extra details. It's either you're engraving it or not. Uh, sometimes with wood and other kind of materials here in the shop, we have a little bit of give and take. But with stone and rock and field stone and sandstone, all that kind of stuff, we have zero give and zero take. When it comes to text, again, any kind of text, any kind of font, any size works totally fine here in the shop for you. They can be laid out in any way that you want. We can also do in any kind of volume. So let's say you have a wedding coming up and you want to give out stones to people with the wedding date and a picture of the bride and groom. That's not a problem. We can do it here. The resolution that we do our rocks at are generally around 1000 dpi to 600 dpi. So basically whatever you print out of your laser printer at home, your inkjet or whatever you have, is the same resolution we can do on stone. That's the right density. Another common question I get from customers is how sharp is the detail on stone? And that comes with a bit of a caveat because it really depends on the stone density. It's very similar to wood. If we have, let's say, a project that we do on basswood, which is basically uh, like a, the foam of woods, um, you can't go at 1000 dpi on it and actually see 1000 dpi. Well, it's the same thing with stone. You have some stone that are like sponge stones. Um, we get horrible resolution off that because there's no density. There's nothing there for the laser to actually vaporize off of. Now another kind of stone that comes up often is aggregate stone, which is basically a mix of a lot of different stones. And that also causes issues with the laser because the way the laser is, there's no two-way feedback system. Let's take, just take a quick look at this one here. So this stone here, if you look at it, it's a very consistent aggregate source you can see here so there's not a whole bunch of different kind of stone uh, pieces not pieces of marble and granite and you know all the other kind of pebbles and that kind of stuff in here and glass all mixed up together it's just a constant uh, solid uh, piece of stone and that's what you want because the problem is if you have different densities you have different results um, again going back to the wood whenever we laser engrave wood if there's a knot on the wood, that means we're not going as deep as where there is no knot. Or if there's grain, we're not going as deep as where there is no grain. And it's the same thing with, with stone and rock. Uh, if we have a very consistent material, we'll get a consistent, not a consistent depth, we'll get a consistent result. Now if there's different densities of stone in the stone, uh, then some areas we won't engrave at all, and other spots will engrave too much, and then you end up with chipping. So again, it, it really depends on the aggregate and the stone. Generally, what I suggest to customers is 
If they have a low volume, I'll go to the beach myself and go grab them. It's a fun thing to do. And at least then I can grab the stones that look the best. Other times, customers order them off Amazon or something like that. Especially like black stone, like granite. It comes out really, really nice. So there's a few sources, but again, you want a stone that's consistent across the board. sources of stone it doesn't really matter stone is stone in my, in my opinion so for instance I go to the beach and I get a stone like this this to me is stone or rock or pebble whatever you want to call it as long as it's relatively flat as you can see here we'll get a relatively smooth and even result the problem with stone sometimes is that it has a bit of a curve to it like you'd see here so it's not a totally flat stone it's relatively flat so what that causes uh, for the laser, the issue it causes, let's just stay, <clears throat> got a little piece of Lego here, and the Lego is totally flat, which is what you want on a stone if possible. Now if it's a little bit off like this, what happens to the laser focus going straight down? Here it will be in focus, here it's out of focus. So what that means is I need to run the laser two, three, four, five, ten times at different focal uh, heights in order to get a consistent engraving. The nice thing about stone is such a tough material that even if I go over it 10 times and I'm out of focus, I'm not actually causing any damage. It needs to be in focus precisely uh, to actually cause the engraving. Our laser behind me here is 140 watts, so it's definitely strong uh, for engraving. It's top line for engraving. But stone is just such a hard, dense material that you really, if you're not dead on focus, nothing's happening. Let's take a look at a random stone I picked up in the field behind the shop. So here we have a stone that's really rough, which is fine, doesn't really matter. Now this stone here, over here, is relatively flat, so this would be a very good surface to engrave on. The opposite side is really, really rough. It actually looks pretty cool like a map. The problem with this side here is you can see there's some different heights. And again, so that means in here maybe you have to do one or two passes to get the right thickness or the right result on the engraving. On this side here, it might need five or six passes to get the same result. And the problem is when you have angled stuff like this here, um, there's no way for it to be totally in focus. You'll get a little bit of a blurring result from the laser. Now another thing I just noticed on this stone is that it's actually made up of a bunch of other stones. Actually, you see a fossil here as well. Uh, engraving fossils, fossils are the remnants, there's just stone so there's no real uh, difference we can engrave over fossils. This one here is actually made up of a bunch of different little rocks which is not necessarily a good thing here. If you look at it closely, you can see there's other kinds of rock inside of this rock here. Now it's even more pronounced on the other side as you can see here. So different kind of rocks everywhere. So definitely, let's say the customer sent me this rock here absolutely it would be on this side here I wouldn't even bother on this side and the way to get the nice shine from it as you can see here there's a nice shine that's just from the varnish stone doesn't really have that much contrast what we generally do here in the shop is after we laser engrave it and we get a pretty good result uh, you apply a varnish over it and that makes the stone look wet and that wetness adds a lot to the contrast of the stone
application where you require a rock engraving, contact me at cncri.com. Again, I prefer to find the stone myself because I find better results. Uh, customers don't send a stone and literally can't do anything with it. It's just the wrong type of stone, the wrong levels, wrong everything. So if you have a very, very sentimental stone, send me off a picture first. And I'll let you know right away if it's possible or not. Otherwise, just say, okay, we need a stone that's roughly, you know, it's whatever we find. So you might say, I need a stone that's, you know, roughly eight inches by four inches, and I need the following text on it. Well, then I'll go on a, on a hike or a field trip or something on a beach somewhere, and I'll find the stone that works out perfect for that application. Now, again, you want to have a nice, consistent stone surface on it, and hopefully all the same sort of stone, not a mix of a bunch of different aggregates and you want to have very fine aggregate. So like sandstone, for instance, is made up of very, very fine aggregate, which is great because you get really good resolution out of it. If it's something made out of very thick stone pieces, it just doesn't come out very well and the contrast isn't very nice. So again, if you need engraved rock, contact me at cncri.com. <laughs>